this, this is not about me, so don't, don't, don't say. It's, it's, I feel these things kind of embarrassing. Uh, so this is about you, and, and I think if you heard what Kenny and what David said, it's about you and you have the opportunity to make a difference in your life, and when you make a difference in your life, you're making a difference in the state, in your families, in the country, and maybe in the world, why not? You have many people that have made that. And, but before speaking, I wanted to give you an example of someone that was here last year, and because of his own initiative, he's doing things in one year that are unbelievable. And, and still, come here. I, I, I need a microphone for him. He was a Subiendo guy last year. He wasn't in, in, in orange. I think you were in blue, but no, different. We were, we were, oh, you were in orange, OK. Yeah, orange. And so I, I, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And he was here in Subiendo. And so one year after, he, he's going to tell us what he's going to be doing a year from now and during the summer. So why don't you tell how you got to, to where you are trying to get? OK, uh, well, obviously, during the summer, I have a summer job here in Austin. I was born in Austin, and so I grew up here. And so this is my job. I was on the wait staff here um, for you guys. Uh, so after Subiendo last year, class of 2011, we all stayed in touch with each other. So just like Kenny said, the networking with everybody that you're meeting and everybody that you will continue to stay with, you actually do. Because all of us, were going all over the place. There are a couple of us in uh, Chicago with the performing arts. A lot of us are at UT and all over Texas. So um, about me, I Subiendo was my push to push me over the edge to actually apply to UT because I was really excited. Obviously, I'm from Austin, so I didn't, um, I wanted to get out of Austin. But after Subiendo, I got to see a different side of UT and a side that I really liked. So I applied to UT for the College of Fine Arts and Dance, and I need business, which is why I came to Subiendo in the first place, because I, I like the environment. And so I got accepted to the University of Texas at Austin, and I will be attending there next year as a college freshman. Woohoo! <laughs> clap for that, clap for that, clap for that. Um, and getting my business degree in the College of Fine Arts and business as well with the Business Foundations program. If any of you are thinking about um, pursuing something other than Macombs, you know, if you can't really get in, but that is okay, try anyways. Um, look to the business. There is a present around here that yes, can help, but yes, I'm not telling you that. <laughs> you know. Um, so I'll be at UT next year. I was working this summer because I need to get more money for college and actually. I just applied and got accepted to the Young Ambassadors Program, which is sponsored by the Smithsonian Latino Center. Uh, I leave on Sunday to DC, Washington DC, where we have a week of training and it's for um, rising Latino leaders with an interest in the arts, uh, any arts, whether it be performing, visual, something like that. And so they take us out to DC. So someone gave to you with the plate and said, please take this, so how, how did it work? Uh, no, it's an, it's an open application, an open application, open to anyone, just, just like Subiendo. And if you've already gone to something like Subiendo, and I've been to a couple of uh, programs, but none of them were actually like Subiendo, because up to date, and I just told uh, Madeline this the other day at the luncheon, up to date, Subiendo was the best program that I had been to, and I'm telling you, I've been to a few out of states and things like this, but um, Subiendo was the best. We'll see if DC can top it, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. So let's go over what we just heard. You're here because Kenny said, Kenny wanted to create a forum to create leaders. And you're here because you applied, and I'm pretty sure the, the application process is, is kind of a pain, you know? Application processes and work is kind of a pain. It's better just to go and do something else. You cannot drink beer, but I can. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, just watch TV or whatever. But you decided to do this. And Stephen, what he decided is, look, I want to do different things. I want to go and perform in the arts, get a business degree related to art. So he went to look for opportunities that enable him to achieve his goal. Nothing is given to you. You have to go and look for it. You can sit and think, well, maybe someone will come with a plate and a marvelous fellowship because I'm amazing. Well, no one will know that it's amazing if you don't raise your hand. So the whole idea of Subiendo was create leaders. And leaders are the ones that go and look for the opportunities. So the whole goal here is to show that you have to look for your opportunities. And when you look for opportunities, you are the one that is going to make a change, changing your life first 
for sure, but also in the life of everyone around you. That can be uh, your family, that can be uh, your employees, for example, David, he has 650 people working in Dimensional worldwide in uh, eight different offices, soon to, soon to be 11. Changes in the, in the city, we have 400 employees in, in Austin that we are not employees because we were not here before. So you can make changes that affect the life of many because you just take the initiative. And it's easier to take the initiative at this point of your life. It's easier also not to do it. But at this point in your life, you can take a lot of risks. You know, just go for your dreams. Just go and look what you are trying to find. Find a way to get it. There are always ways to get it. The state, the country gives you tons of opportunities to find ways to get what you want. And just get it. Just get it done. Like Nike says, Nike says just do it. Just do it. <laughs> you know? Just do it. You know, when these guys run marathons or whatever they run, I cannot run anything, but <laughs> yeah, these guys run marathon or anything, it's a lot of effort. Well, achieving your goals is going to be a lot of effort. But at the end of the day, it's going to be rewarded. It's going to reward it because you try hard and you find the opportunities and, and, and you just have a lot of persistence in what you are trying to do. And sooner or later, you succeed. And don't plan 20 years. Because if you think that I ever planned to live in Texas, you're wrong. I didn't even know where Texas was. <laughs> eh, sorry, Kenny. I live in the hill country. Of course I didn't know where the hill country is. Yeah, I, 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 I still don't know where it starts. I think it starts in Westlake, but, uh, but I'm not sure. I, I, but just go and take the opportunities. See what you want to do. Trust try hard. Find the path. And whenever you see, well, this is something that I didn't plan, but it's more interesting, just go and grab it. As long as you believe in yourself and you work hard, you will succeed. And one of the important things, I think, that, they, that Subiendo, that this is encouraging education. And, and maybe I put too much effort in education. I mean, at the end of the day, PhD in aeronautics, you say, why well, you need one of those? And that, you know, it's never, never too much. Yeah, maybe if you stop earlier, maybe you waste less time and do weird things like I was doing. But you know, education is good. And so from here, you are in high school. Just go to university, get your education. It's something that is worth a lot of money. It's worth a lot of satisfaction. It's a pain, let's be clear, studying for a final. <laughs> analysis, who likes this analysis thing? But at the end of the day, you will use it. You may not use what you see in the class, but the logic or, or the way of thinking or something, you will use it sometime in your life, and it's going to make a difference that is going to be rewarding. This is not about me, so I don't want to be speaking the whole time. So this is about you guys. So we have to be in interactive. If you're leaders, just raise your hand and ask questions. If, if not, we just go and have dinner. So, uh, so um, I don't know if anyone has a question or anything that can help. Uh, I would love to, to have this as a conversation more than as a monologue. Please. What in Argentina like, made you come here? We are going to make you run from place to place, <laughs> so be ready. You're going to, we are going to get your salary. <laughs> exactly what happened in Argentina that inspired you to instead come over to the States? OK, the, so what happened in Argentina that inspired me to come to stay? Nothing, by the way. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you. I, my path took me wherever I am. I, I, I cannot tell you that I plan it. Yeah. When I told you that you get to a fork and you just pick whatever branch you like of the fork, yeah, it's true. So in Argentina, I finished my degrees in civil engineering. Um, and, and so I was, I was a civil engineer. And then inside civil engineering, I did hydraulics and structures. That is a little bit more theoretical. And then from there, I started working in something that is numerical analysis. Um, and then I got the opportunity to, to go to Brown, I applied to four universities to, uh, to, to, to do graduate studies. And, and, and I was lucky that Brown gave me a fellowship to do a master's there. So I went to Brown, I did a master in, in mechanical engineering. I could have taken a master in applied math, uh, but at, at that point in time, uh, 
Rhode Island is a beautiful place, but too cold for me. Yeah, yeah. So I really say, look, this, this United States sucks. I want to go to a place <laughs> that is not so cold, because for me, the whole United States was cold because Rhode Island was cold. And, and so I said, look, I want to run away from here. Uh, and so instead of getting a master in applied math, I got a master in mechanical engineering because I said, well, if I go back home, mechanical engineering, I, I can't get a job. I'm fixing cars. I don't know what doing what. And so, uh, so but after that, I, uh, I got into a PhD program at Caltech. And that's California. The, the weather is not cold, so suddenly start loving the idea of, of not cold weather. <laughs> uh, and, and so from there, I start work, got a PhD in, in aeronautical engineer. I think the technical degree is, is PhD in, in applied sciences, but it's aeronautical engineering department. And, um, and, and, but after a while of doing that, I, I said, well, ah, look, I was going from theoretical thing to more theoretical and more esoteric and more esoteric. My PhD is a fatigue crack in FCC metals. Means nothing to anyone but myself, by the way. <laughs> and, and so, uh, uh, so then I said, Oof, this is interesting, but no one really cares about what I'm doing. Not even my wife cares about this. So <laughs> there was only one time that someone cared because there was a plane crash accident. And, and I basically said, I, I, I know what happened. But you cannot speak about that with fun because it's a plane crash. It's, 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 it's not good for anyone. So basically, it was kind of a useless life. Uh, and so I said, look, I want to do something different. I want to have some, do something that has more impact in, in people's life in, in a time span that I can see. And so I said, well, OK. Basically, you have two choices there. And maybe there are more, but I was ignorant at the time. And so I said, well, I can do finance or I can do medicine. Well, OK, let's go medicine. I see blood and I faint. So <laughs> medicine is out. So it's very simple. So I say finance. OK, let's do finance. So OK, let's do finance. And so I start looking, OK, let's do finance. And, and I run into David's company, Dimensional. And they have magnificent offices in, in Santa Monica at the time, in front of the ocean, where you see dolphins every day. You say, oh, man, this is the best place in the world. I work there. And I start working there. but I, but. Uh, you see, it's, it's kind of, you, you come to a point, you make a decision, you say, I'm going to grab that. And whenever you decide you are going to go that way, you put your full spirit and effort to go that way until you decide to change and go some other way. So I say, well, I'm going to go there. So I was lucky enough to be able to work with people that are amazing inside the mansion, David and Rex on the business side. Ken and Gene, that are magnificent uh, financial economists. And basically, I got a second PhD for free. They were getting, I was getting paid to do that. So, and you know, it, it was long days and long hours because you had to catch up. I didn't have any financial background. And, but again, you bet on yourself and say, Psst, I'm going to do it, what the heck? And, and you put all the effort and start working hard. And I started trying to learn all the different parts of the business, first investments, then the marketing, then the legal. And I kind of, kind of speak about legal structures and financial issues, no matter what country you are, that we do business, and we do business in many countries. And so um, that's my path. My path is just random path until you get to the point and say, well, I want to do something. And then you look at your opportunities and say, this is the opportunity. I'm going to go hard. I'm going to try. And you just try hard. And you know, that's, that's life. And that's what you're going to be doing when you finish high school. You're going to say, I'm going to university. I'm going to start this career. And you don't know anything about that. And you're going to try hard and hard and hard until you succeed. And you will finish wherever life takes you. But if you don't try hard, you are not going to get anywhere. So try. Any other question? Please. As an individual, have you ever been discouraged? And what has um, motivated you to continue? Oh, if I have been discouraged. OK. Do you remember 2008? The market went down? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look, you, have, you always get a little bit of discouragement about tons of things. But you have short-term noise and long-term goals. You focus on your goals and you work toward the goals. The goals, your goals, the goals of the people that you represent, the goals of, the, of your family, the goals of, the, of your company, the goals of everything that is around you, and you believe in that, and you just push hard to that 
long-term goal. And in the middle, the path is going to be tough. It's not going to be all roses and say, oh, please come with this way. Everything is beautiful. And no, it's going to be discouraging every step. You're going to have something that bothers you and, and you have to overcome it. You know, and that's life. Everything is the same. You know, my kids are, are getting older and my, younger, my oldest kid is challenging me on swimming. I, I used to swim quite a lot when I was younger. And I know that one of these days, he will beat me. For now, I think that I can beat him. I'm not sure yet. He, we have a race next weekend. So, <laughs> you know, that will be the first time that I say, well, he beats me one. I will never be able to catch him with him. So it's going to be a permanent discouragement, but at the same time, it's satisfaction. Your path is going to be rough. Take it for sure. It's not going to be easy. You think that it's going to be easy? It's not. Even if you win the lottery, it's going to be horrible and difficult. But you look at the long-term goal, look at your long-term goal, and this is what brings your, your satisfaction. Work hard towards that. Yeah? Please. Where did you start in the dimension? We have to make these guys run. <laughs> Where did you start in the company, and how is your path to being the co-CEO? You know the mail room to the side of that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was research assistant to uh, Ken French and Jim Fama, the, uh, and uh, that gave me a lot of education in finance. Uh, they're not easy guys. They're beautiful guys, but they're not easy guys. But you know, uh, that's why they are world-renowned and experts in, in financial markets. And so that allows to learn quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I started in the mail room, basically, to the side. <laughs> you take, again, you take your chances. You have to take your chances. If you don't take chances, you basically are where you are, and you never get away from that. These guys are doing exercise, I love it. Okay, now that you're in a stable place in your life, what is your long-time goal? Or, is, oh, oh, that's stable? There is no stable place okay. in your life. Well, what is your goal? The, oh, yes, one, six feet under. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what are you striving for right now? Oh, look, I have a lot of responsibilities. Uh, we represent, uh, we, we manage money for a lot of people around the world. And so we are fiduciaries to, to those people. We are trying to do the best we can for them. And uh, because, you know, the lifetime savings are invested with us. So our goal is to help them achieve their financial goals. And that's something that you cannot take lightly. At the same time, you represent 650 employees worldwide that, that, that they have families. So you, the, the extended family of dimensional employees, you're speaking now 2,000 people. You also stand for some ideas, and, and you know we have a financial a philosophy about how to invest and what to represent, and we think that that's very important. So we, we try every day to spread the gospel of what we stand for, because we think that that's better for uh, people. So every day is a, a new battle, and you fight all of them. You don't shy away from any. Uh, like when you were growing up, did you have any mentors or role models, and or <laughs> when you were here in the states at uh, Caltech at or Brown? Well, my boss is there, so I have to say that he's one of them. But, uh, but <laughs> um, uh, mentors. Um, when I was young, this mentor idea didn't exist, as far as I know, in Argentina at least. Uh, you have a lot of people that uh, you admire. Uh, it's not Maradona, by the way. Uh, but uh, but uh, you have a lot of people that you admire, but the mentoring program didn't exist. Basically, you were on your own. I went to university to give you an idea, University of Buenos Aires, that uh, is probably as big as UT or, or maybe bigger, but, but it's kind of chaos there. Uh, you survive, you float, basically, because uh, it's, it's, you are on your own. They have good courses, good professors, but you're on your own. No one helps you on anything. Yeah. Go and learn. And so, uh, so the mentoring program and holding hands never existed there. And, and that's why I'm telling you the story. Look, it's nice that people will hold your, hold your hands and help you, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. Yeah? Please, you. Let's make him run from one corner to another. You are the next one, so he runs there. <laughs> 
I'm guessing you have a really busy schedule, so I'm wondering mm. how do you manage your time with, let's say, work and your family and all, all that together? I'm still trying to find out that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have an assistant and she manages my time better than me. You know, I, don't, I don't manage my time. Uh, I kind of workaholic, you know. Uh, and so uh, if, if I go to, to, let's suppose that I go to a place on vacation, I really cannot be there for more than, than one week because I drive myself nuts. And my wife and my kids also, by the way. So um, I have to be doing something. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but I have to be doing something. So yeah, I'm kind of workaholic. So do you have any advice for us on how to manage your time when we are... I'm not the right college? guy, as someone is. <laughs> 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 you, can, we, we can, you can ask the guys that work for me. There are a couple of UT fellows here that work for me, and you will say, no, don't ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Is there anything else you hope to achieve in the future that you have not um, done yet? War, peace, and financial <laughs> uh, success for everyone in the world, <laughs> <laughs> and health. <laughs> uh, look, at the end of the day, what you, you are trying to achieve is uh, make a difference and be a good person. And that definition changes from person to, to person, how, how much of an influence you can have in order to make a difference in people's life. You know, each one will be different. You know, Stephen is working in arts. Uh, you know, he may be, do a magnificent piece at some point, and people just look at that, and by looking at that, get satisfaction. My job is trying to get, help people achieve their financial objectives, and that's what I have to do. Uh, and then you want to do that with integrity, and your word has to mean something. Because at the end of the day, you stand by your word, and if you don't have it, that's a problem. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm not here to give advice, by the way. I, I have more errors in my life than you, so I don't know why. why so be careful. What has been your motivation to, the motivation that has driven you to accomplish all that you have? Uh, maybe it's part of being a workaholic, you know. Uh, whatever is the objective, I have to achieve it. Uh, what, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely critical to myself. Uh, what is not really good, by the way, it's quite bad. Uh, you know, sometimes you say, bah, I screw up and move over. Uh, just forget about that. Uh, it's difficult for me to forget screw ups. Uh, what helps, because you learn quite a lot from your own mistakes, eh, at the same time, you punish yourself too much. So, you know, eh, I take my job as a duty. You know, I, when, when I, I used, to, used to be in charge of research, and I, and I used to call the research ship team when we were hiring, I said, the few, the proud, the research team. Because <laughs> eh, it was a duty to work there and working hard and trying to help the company and help clients. And for me, my job is a duty, yeah, and, and there is no way out. Yeah, it is a duty, and, and, and so whatever I define to be my objective is more like a loose objective. It's a, it's a really strong objective, whatever that is. Yeah, that's life. It's good and bad at the same time. A lot of people here think that they have to know exactly what they want to do, and I spoke with somebody once, and they told me, to not worry about it and just to follow your passion and the details will sort themselves out. Do you feel that that applies to you know, how you came from Argentina and you did what you wanted to do and eventually think you got to where you wanted to be? Well, I know that they're going to finish six feet under. I already said that. I don't know where I'm going to be. Hey, look, there, there are a lot of people here, and I think and that's a conversation that you and Dina, you should have with all. You have Joe Long, Teresa, you have Will, you have David, you have Kenny. You speak with everyone. As far as I know, I never plan much. I don't think that you can plan much. If someone comes with you with a business plan, and say, this is my business plan for the company that I'm going to build, and I'm going to have this amount of revenue and these profits, and these people will show up and hire me and all that, I say, that's crap. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I look at your eyes and say, when everything works bad, and nothing, nothing that like you plan works like you plan, what are you going to do about that? And, and, and that speaks about you, not about your plan. And so, yeah, you have to have an idea to do what you like to do. You cannot do any th things that you don't like. That's, no, even if they pay you a lot of money, 
You don't last long doing things that you dislike. You have to do something that you like. Uh, but there are many things that you can like, you know. And so be happy doing what you like and work hard. I, look, you have many people here that, that have extremely successful life. Go and speak with all of them. They're here and they don't charge today. So go and do it. <laughs> um, how was your overall college experience? And was there something that I guess gave you, what gave you the hardest time? Like was it time management or coming from another, coming from Argentina over here, like the transition or? My college, like you call college, was in Argentina. So my college experience and your college experience will not be the same. Um, I, um, I have courses at six in the morning. I remember I have calculus, calculus three, that is some weird stuff, at six in the morning on Mondays. <laughs> You cannot imagine how tough is that to be awake with that guy putting a little life for imaginary variables. And at, <laughs> at six in the morning eh, on Monday, you just don't know what the guy is speaking about, even if you try. But, eh, <laughs> so my college experience is very different than the one that you will have. Eh, but I can tell you, it's extremely rewarding. It's, it's, it's challenging. In particular, the first year. The first years of everything that you do is very challenging. The first years of undergrad were challenging. The first years of grad students were challenging. After, after one, one year and a half, it's just routine. You just get to the new routine and you say, yeah, I just bring it over, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, I remember the, the most difficult thing for me, uh, when I got to Brown, look, I, my English is what it is. You like it or not. I'm not going to change it. Uh, even if I try, I can't, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's easier for you to change your English to my English than for me to change to your English. So it, let's put it that way. And, and when I came to Brown, I remember that they have a beautiful teacher. She was great. She was, uh, but I, the first couple of weeks, I didn't know what she was speaking about. I, I just didn't. I didn't understand a word of what she was saying. Uh, and, but I, when she was writing on the uh, blackboard, it just put in formulas, I knew what she was saying. So I was able to understand the math that she was putting, but I was not able to understand the English that she was saying. So, but at the, now I can tell you and have fun. Like I tell you, I, I, I always tell the story that I, 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 you know, I came to Providence, Rhode Island, and I went to order a sandwich. And this was the last time that I ordered a sandwich for several years because the guy's just jumping on me. What do you want? What kind of bread? And I say, wheat, rye? I don't even know the kinds of bread now after I don't know, 18 years of being in this country. And they go, and what kind of cheese? And 50 different kind of cheese. And, and he was just saying, blah, 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 blah. I say, and I was always answering, yes, because I didn't know what he was saying. And I went to be embarrassed. And so I stopped ordering sandwiches. I said, ah, that's not for me, even though I like sandwiches. So I can tell you now and, and have fun. Uh, but at the time, it wasn't so much fun, but it, uh, now, I, now I laugh at myself. Yeah, what the heck. <laughs> Go. Uh, how did you discover this company that you now work for? <laughs> I, 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 someone sent me, they are hiring. And I said, oh, let me send a resume. Uh, and I went there and I said, OK, uh, you have a job. I said, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not joking, I'm not joking. <laughs> so when I say, <laughs> when, when I say that I was working here for 13 years and David says 11, because for the first two years, David didn't know that I was here, but that's <laughs> Chandra knew, you know Chandra? Did you ever have like an experience where you were put out of your comfort zone that you can say has helped you like up to today? Okay, now repeat it in English. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, look, uh, I, ha I have experiences of whatever you want. Uh, I, I was the other day in the conference and I was flying the plane and, and I asked someone for a coffee, and they gave me a Coke. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> you just live with all these things, it's fine. <laughs> all right. No more? Lunch? Oh. 
Dina. <laughs> Are you happy? I am. I am. <laughs> um, I have. I have fun. Sometimes I have a lot of headaches, and, and that's why I have a lot of white hair. But uh, but it's it's fine. If it's that's that's what I, I told Carlos at you, yeah, Carlos. I told Carlos if, if if you don't enjoy what you do, you cannot do it for long. It's just it's impossible. Uh, so you, the most important thing is you have to enjoy what you do, and then once you enjoy it. Eh, try to be the best at what you do. And you will never achieve to be the best. That doesn't matter. You have to always try. Yeah? How about a hand for Ed Bordo? How about that? <laughs> Ed Bordo's story is remarkable. And uh, this company is the leading uh, investment firm relative to sort of quantitative analysis and the investment through very financial, very uh, significant financial modeling and very sophisticated transactions. You're sitting in, without a doubt, the, one of the most uh, sophisticated companies in the world here at DFA, and it's been a real tribute to this city and to this state that David moved uh, Dimensional Fund Advisors here. It's been a real blessing. David mentioned education, <clears throat> and I might add that uh, he is a graduate of Kansas and the University of Chicago. And uh, several years ago, he and Suzanne uh, made a gift to the University of Chicago, and the school is now known as the Booth School at Chicago, Chicago Booth. And as you know, Chicago is one of the most magnificent business schools in the world, and it's named for David Booth. That so tells you how much he values education and you see through Eduardo what it means to, to go as far as you can in education, but set your goals to whatever you want to do in life. So Eduardo, thank you very much. And David, thank you for hosting us tonight.